Hey there, Swarmers, and welcome back to The Hive. Yes, you're in the right place, but no, I'm not the gorgeous and talented Lexi. My name's Crystal, and I'm Swarm's co-founder. I'm gonna be dropping in from time to time to bring you these videos. If you're here for the first time too, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there. For my first foray onto Swarm TV, I'm discussing something close to my heart, and that's the Great Barrier Reef. This natural wonderland is the world's largest living coral reef. And although it's famous for these incredible corals, it's so much more than that. The reef is home to 30 species of whale, dolphin and porpoise, 133 species of sharks and stingrays, six species of turtles, and 1,600 different species of fish. The entire area is known as the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, of which the coral only makes up about 7%. A small percentage, yes, but absolutely integral to the functioning of the delicate ecosystem. The marine park stretches approximately 2,300 kilometers, or 1,429 miles, off the coast of Queensland, in northeastern Australia. I'm sure you've heard that the Great Barrier Reef can be seen from the International Space Station, but for more local perspective, it runs the same length as the west coast of the US from Vancouver to the Mexican border. It covers an area half the size of Texas, or 98% the size of Germany, or more than the United Kingdom, Switzerland and Holland combined. It includes some 3,000 coral reefs, 600 continental islands, 300 coral caves and 150 inshore mangrove islands. Its environmental significance means that the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. After years of devastating bleaching events, inadequate coral spawning, destructive events like oil spills and the warming oceans from climate change, in 2021, there was a push by UNESCO for it to be listed as in danger. The Australian government lobbied internationally to fight this, taking diplomats diving in the reef and sending the environment minister around the world in a private jet in a bid to secure votes against the motion. The campaign was successful, with UNESCO delaying their decision until after reassessment of the situation, which will happen in 2023. Reef and environmental advocates were frustrated by this, feeling that the in danger status would have drawn necessary attention from the global community to Australia's poor environmental protection and climate policies. The government was asked to submit a plan to UNESCO by February 1st, 2022, outlining the protections which would be put in place. So in true last minute scrambling form, Australia's Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, announced on January 27th, 2022, that the reef would receive a huge cash injection to the tune of 1 billion Australian dollars or 703 million US dollars to be spent over a nine year period. For financial perspective, pre-pandemic, it was calculated that the annual contribution to the Australian economy by the Great Barrier Reef was $6.4 billion, far and away outpacing the rest of the country in terms of GDP contribution, and kind of makes the promise of $1 billion over nine years sound a little woeful. But as we always say here in the hive, let's keep a glass half full attitude. Realistic optimism is pretty vital right now. So where will this money go? Nearly 600 million is dedicated to improving water quality, including remediating erosion and minimizing nutrient and pesticide runoff. 250 million is for reef management and conservation, like reducing the threat from the damaging crown of thorn starfish and preventing illegal fishing. 92 million is for research and utilizing world leading reef resilience and adaptation strategies and 74 million will go to the traditional owners and community groups for projects to deal with species protection, habitat restoration, marine debris, and citizen science. But something seems to be missing from this list of focus areas. Water management, tick. Species conservation and habitat restoration, tick and tick. Management of further irreparable damage to the iconic ecosystem due to climate change, global warming, and ocean acidification. Hmm. So for all the good the money will do, and it doubtlessly will if managed wisely, the major cause for the potential collapse of the ecosystem has not been dealt with. So the band-aids will only hold for so long. 
while climate change and the continual spewing of greenhouse gases from fossil fuel exploration and distribution from right next door to the Great Barrier Reef are being willfully ignored, further devastating damage is unavoidable. So once again, our ask of you swarmers is that you petition your local governments to do better. This and many other Band-Aid fixes are underwhelming at best and simply not going to cut it. So let them know that you see their transparency and demand more. So that's it for now, Swarmers. Thank you so much for joining us. We love what we do and we love that you're here with us. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay sustainable. Mm -hmm.